And a lot of women don't know how to play chess in their relationship. They, they play fucking checkers. It's chess everywhere. It's chess in business. It's chess in your personal life. Right. It's chess in relation, relationships. But because no we're, ta- we're on the topic yeah. of relationships, women don't understand that they are too much in their masculine. And I say that from experience. That when they're too much in their masculine and they're like, oh, I don't want my man to cry. He needs to be strong. It's like strong is going to be too much. Be careful what you ask for, because when a man is so much in his masculine, he's going to start measuring, you know, swords with you. And then what? What's up, everybody? Welcome to Purpose Over Pleasure podcast number one podcast about freedom, masculinity, and entrepreneurship. And I'm your host, Alex Payne. And today, we have my special, usual guest, my fiance. Hi, I'm back. Yes, she's back. She's back in a new studio, new look, new episode, new me, new everything. Mm -hmm. Same relationship. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, babe, what a day. What are we gonna give him today? What, what are a we gonna year! What a year! It's only, it's only April. April. Damn. It's only April. That's that's a third of the month. Yeah. Yeah. We entered the second quarter of the month, yep. but a lot has happened. A lot has. A happened. lot has happened, and as as shit was happening, we were still dealing, tolerating, surviving <laughs> with each other. With each other. In a one bedroom now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where to, uh, why are you going to tell about business? Well, what's wrong with that? No, no. Oh, yeah. It's well, well, the move. The move. We moved. Yeah, we moved. We moved. Actually, I, t- I talked about it already on the last episode. Yeah, so they already know. Yeah, we moved. We moved uh, we our residences. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we downgraded in, in size because we realized a three bedroom. We didn't know what was, to do with it. too big. <laughs> and because we had a three bedroom, we ended up hoarding more shit and was necessary so uh we moved to a very nice one bedroom uh, very nice like sick brand new one but uh in the process we learned one thing or well, at least i did is that the more room you have the more shit you're gonna hoard and this forced at least me into really cleaning up my closet getting rid of old junk physically and mentally and you too especially you babe especially you I'm Jesus a female, Christ. though. What That's does allowed. Yeah, but you're smaller in size. That's why I have a problem understanding. <laughs> you're smaller in size. You're literally half exactly. my body weight. So I have more options and more choices. So what's wrong with having options? Why do you need so many shoes? Why? Because I am your sporty. I am your business look. I am your cute date like princess, passenger princess. Kind of shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I right. have different looks. Toesies. Yeah. Have you guys seen her toes? I have cute They're toes. They're so cute. That was a deciding factor for me. One of the deciding. This is a major deciding factor for me. Uh, toesies. Uh, yeah. Love your toes, babe. All right. Anyways, what are we giving them today? We're giving them. Yes, like I was saying, in the process of all that, we deal with each other, deal with a lot of emotions. So today we're going to talk about. Emotions and relationships. Yes. And we're going to give you our tips of how not to become too emotional, how not to let your emotions affect your relationship. So go ahead and start off with that, babe. So you sent me a video from, I believe it was Red Pill. I sent you a lot of videos. By the way, shout out to Red Pill Rants. You guys post dope video. <laughs> I love them. I love them. Good job, guys. So that one video, there's a lady and she's recording herself and she says something along the lines of if I, I, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I understand men have feelings and if my man wants to cry, you know, I'll be open to him crying. But then um, I want to just masculine. punch him. Yeah. Like I, I, I feel like when he starts crying, then I step into my masculine and then I want to punch him. I sent it to you today. Yeah, you sent it yeah. to me today, yeah. right? So we're dissecting that video right now? Okay. Yeah. So I actually stitched that video. I haven't posted it yet. Okay. But okay. I wanted to stem off of that how a lot of these women 
who say that they want this masculine man and all this good stuff, right? Yeah. They forget that men are emotion or emotional. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's more in the anger. It's more in the, you know. A lot of times. A lot of the times it's that. They put that out to the world. But my perspective is when a man comes home and he is crying t about something that, you know, just it, it's everybody has their levels. Right. And so when the steam is ready to overflow because there's, it's too hot, it starts, you know, letting off the steam and air, you know. So the man's going to come home and he's going to cry. He gets emotional, you know. I think it's women should embrace the fact that if a man comes to you crying, you should step into that's when you need to step into your feminine role and and accept the fact that your man trusts you enough to come to you and vent. That's when a woman needs to realize that her part in the house and on the chessboard is up. She needs to talk to him and be open and let him say what he has to say, knowing that at the end of the day, he just needs to let that out because men are okay. It's, it's healthy for a man to do that. I see it as a man can go to his woman because he knows she's nurturing. Women should be nurturing to their uh, partners, mm -hmm. to their men, mm -hmm. whether it's your boyfriend, your fiance. Yes, you need to be nurturing to your man because you know the man is going to treat you like the woman that he loves and respects. So I'm sure there's men out there who think of a girl who's crying. They think the same thing. But what men need to understand is sometimes they need to lower their testosterone and be empathetic when their partner wants to cry. You know, sometimes it was uncomfortable for you to hear me cry. And you're just like, I need to solve the problem. What is the problem? Like, shut up and just listen to me. <laughs> So it goes the same way. You had to learn how to shut off your masculine sometimes and be empathetic. And let me just cry. Yeah. But I think the the masculine in some women, they forget that they need to turn in they need to turn that off and turn on their feminine empathetic traits. So yeah, that's what I that's, that's what I came up talked with. about the Sometimes women just want to be listened to. That That is one of the lessons that I, I did learn with you. And I really, in, in my mind, in my mind as a man, right, as, as a masculine man, I think that I am helpful by solving the problem. Because that's what we do, we solve problems, right? Mm -hmm. I solve problems at work, I solve problems at other work, I solve problems around people around me, my family, that's, that's, that's my nature you know that's my natural state right so in my love language i believe that by solving your problems i show my love right for you so i automatically by default step into that mode right and then i realize that okay i can do that later right now at the moment you just want to be heard and listened to and then also from that i realized that it's the same for me because when, when you would start to interrupt me, because when I made the conscious decision to listen instead of interrupting or trying to solve the problem, I noticed that when I do that and people do that to me, including you, I was like, okay, I don't like that. So yes, for sure, sometimes the person just want to be heard. The other person doesn't have to go into a, a, a problem-solving mode right away. And that has helped you know, our relationship at least, at least or at least myself. And with that in mind, I want to say that, yes, maybe by default, that's the same thing that happens to women. Right. You know? Oh, yeah. It's happened. I, I think. And that's where we go back to the feminine and masculine. Yeah. Some women have more masculine traits in in different parts of their their um, yeah. their being. And there are women like that. I'll be honest. I was like that one time to a guy oh, that yeah. I was seeing that I, he was crying because he was pouring you his heart like out to me. You were like in our relationship, too. And I had to like slow it, you down a little bit. And that's just, just that's how we are. Some women, when they don't get the when they get they, too much tough love, like I grew up with tough oh, love. Okay. I I'm 
I'm unable to shut that off. What, so, the, the, the need for love? No, 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 no. So he was, this 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 guy was crying mm. and, and, and showing his emotions to me, oh, okay. right? And because there was no real attraction, I felt no empathy towards him. There was no real connection. It didn't hit me like it hit him. It did or didn't? It didn't, which it is didn't. why I was like, why are you fucking crying? I can see how that. So it goes back to you have to be intentional with your relationships. Because if I was intentional with him, then that means I would care for him and care for how he felt. But because I really didn't, I was just like, are you done? And so that lady who said that she just wants to punch him, well, then you might just end up continuing to be single if you don't know how to tap more into your feminine and quiet your masculine but no masculine man is going to want to come to a woman and give him his and be vulnerable with him or with her well the backbone to this is actually the fact that number one reason why men don't like being vulnerable with women is that even though sometimes or a lot of times, women naturally can hear you out and listen to you. But when something goes wrong, they're quick to use that against you, weaponize that. And that's where trust issues come in. I can't say that I've dealt with so many women in my life that the ones that I was vulnerable with or vented to in the darkest, uh, uh, most painful times of my life, yeah, they listen to me. But... In one of my relationships, I learned that that can backfire at you because as the relationship was going downhill, that person used something that was, you know, vulnerable, emotional to me and threw it back in my face. And I was like, I will never, ever open up to any woman. But you that. know that when you don't open up to other people Besides going you, forward, you're just hindering your own growth. I know. I know. It, it, it takes time. I can't say that i followed that advice that i gave to myself obviously you know that i allow myself to be vulnerable and emotional with you well i just remember like to me that was a shocking lesson it was an eye-opener it was an eye-opener and but that's why men are scared oh yeah because men are judged by other men all day because we test each other's masculinity at least normal healthy masculine men we test each other nowadays these fucking snowflakes you just kind of blow on them and they fucking fall apart and shit you know run for the safe space you know it's true you motherfuckers know it's true the, the generation that starts with letter v especially and yes i said that regardless it's in a man's nature we're gonna test each other out mm -hmm. so if you're unable to withstand that pressure then you're gonna just collapse and everything's gonna go downhill from the in your relationship so do you believe that that happened to you or for you that happened definitely for me for yeah, well it happened to me but it happened for me as well because i, I learned a valuable lesson and in, in life now, it's up to me to choose whether to proceed with that lesson for the rest of my life. But the people, the selected few that I was vulnerable with after that were the ones that I really trust and they've been kind of vetted out. Vetted out. I don't, not just going to cry to any woman out oh, there. Yeah. You know, not even, you know, shit. Yeah. I mean, I, I get emotional. Right. You know, but. That's how it is in my life, in my world of a woman. To confide in another woman is very, very challenging and difficult because you think you have it bad with confiding in a woman. Try having multiple women that say that they're your friends. So if a man can't trust a woman with his feelings, sometimes some women can't trust other women with their own feelings and thoughts because those women will turn around and flip it and use it against you but won't even tell you and would use that to talk about somebody else that's true that's true for uh any human being i think anybody can turn around and stab you in the back right 
what, what the difference is is that women are more comfortable talking to each other mm-hmm. they're more comfortable you know like just <laughs> gossip and chat and and blah 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 with each other mm-hmm. men are not like that mm-hmm. you know we bond obviously but it's not like oh you want to go and you know grab coffee and, or <laughs> grab some drinks and, and catch up or you know what no you, you guys know what's, say it differently you know what susan did you know what, no like, you guys talk differently oh men gossip don't get me wrong men gossip right. and talk shit okay. but well, at least not me nor anybody in, in my immediate surrounding or friends that i have we don't say oh man you want to go grab a beer and just fucking talk shit no <laughs> no first of all to me it's hard to imagine that i i don't i don't even go out for drinks anymore mm-hmm. shit i really don't when was the last time i went out i mean see you're the type that doesn't go out for yeah. drinks but you it, go but, out for cigars but when i do yeah i do go for cigars okay i go out for cigars but even during that time it's it's either business self-development or significant events mm-hmm something that's important to my life to our life to business it's not like you know again talking shit about other people that's just a waste of time yeah conversations come up topics come up but most of that is you know what can we learn from each other what can we share what ideas do we have oh how can we make money how can we do this how we can get better shit like that okay so would you say that that recently happened or have you always been that way in what and with, with the boys, mm-hmm. I would say in the last couple of years, definitely, definitely um, reevaluated my surrounding, reevaluated who I hang out with, who I choose to hang out with, um, reevaluated the people that are important to me, the people that help me grow, the people that I help growing, and that itself really narrowed down my uh my topics of discussion because once you kind of get rid of you know fluff and unnecessary and and alcohol you just if you just cut out alcohol out of your life out of your everyday life for example or i'm talking about like drinking often going out for drinks for boys partying you know clubbing etc mm-hmm. etc et right you notice that you're gonna st- start to have first of all uncomfortable situations Second of all, your topics of discussion change. Third of all, obviously, you're going to start l- making less dumb decisions because a lot of times alcohol is a contributing factor to fighting and violence and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, stupid decisions with women, blah, blah, blah. But just reevaluating situation while you're sober, you start to realize like, oh, well, I don't want to talk about that or I don't want to hang out with this person. Or, this is a waste of my time. And, you know, naturally... And yeah, and that would just kind of will separate the ones who don't matter from the ones who matter. So who don't care, you know, from those who do care or you mm-hmm. care about. And it's going to hurt some feelings. It's going to be uncomfortable. But you notice that it will shape you. The saying that goes, you are the byproduct of the five closest people you hang out with is 100% true. 100% true. The first five people you hang out the most, you're going to be like them. But, but, caveat to this is this. You can choose the five people you hang out with the most. And that, in return, can benefit you. Because if you hang out with five dumbasses, you're going to be the sixth dumbass. But if you hang out with five good, self-aware, kind respectable respectful business oriented people guess what even if you were a dumbass you would still have to become better and better and kind of become more like them Hmm, makes sense so now vulnerability let's tap back into the vulnerability um how how is being vulnerable helpful in a relationship First of all, it straightens the relationship because I tell you what, I mean, simply put, if I know shit about you and you know shit about me, that makes the relationship stronger. <coughs> First of all, it increases the level of trust, right? Because for you to open up about something that's really emotional to you, it takes some balls. And same thing for me. 
and then you know that it's based on trust. Like I, I trust you to share certain things with you. You trust me to share everything with me. <laughs> yes. That's the trust. You know, the trust is built for sure. And then number two, you learn about the other person. Because if you tell me your deepest, darkest secrets and I tell you my deepest, darkest secrets, we now have a better understanding of each other, what kind of people we are, what kind of struggles we've gone through. And, you know, sometimes you can develop more respect for that person. Sometimes you're like, fuck, I wish I didn't know that shit. Because I'm sure you've been to those situations. I've been to those situations that are like, not necessarily with you, for example, but I, I've had you know, some women in my life, I was like, fuck, when I wish you that never came out of your mouth because now I'm probably not going to call you again. Okay, so that was my next question. I'm glad you answered that that way. At what point in a relationship is it okay to start being vulnerable? Like, how do you get to the vulnerable place in a relationship? Well, that's a good question. It depends. It depends because... The person you choose to be vulnerable with, you have to make sure that that person can handle your vulnerability. If it's like that chick who wants to punch you in the face when you're vulnerable with her, I would probably take my time or maybe never. So how do you, what signs will give you the, the, the feeling that you're not ready to tell that person? Like, how do you know? Like, so the red flags. Yeah. The red flags for a guy not to open up to a girl. Yeah. First of all, her upbringing. Because you got to know if that person is going to judge you or not. I've had a relationship with, with, with the woman who's very judgmental. And whenever I would say something about me or share something from my past and the shit that I'm really not proud of. I've been judged. And... You know me, I don't give a shit about being judged. But when somebody really close to you that you admire or love and respect judges you, that, that hits different. <clears throat> like, I'm not perfect. You know I'm not perfect. I've done dumb things, bad things in my life, you know, but I also good things. the toilet seat up. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to hell for that, huh? Guys. I either get a dollar or we tell the struggle community with what you do. Putting toilet seats down. Girls okay, create and you learn. a dollar jar for every time. He it's does not even about not money. I don't give a shit about money a anymore. I really I genuinely forget. Like the, the doing the money deal. Yeah, obviously the rate, the number of times that I not put the toilet seat down has decreased, hasn't it? Yeah, because I don't want to spend so much money every time. Well, right? you still owe me two dollars. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> But now I genuinely forget. Now it's left to those times where I genuinely forget. And I would get a call in the middle of the day, like, you know, or FaceTime. You know, baby, I love you. But for the love of God, would you please? You now know, for those who, before anybody says, oh, my God, she's so, like, picky about that. No. no it's no. not that. I say it because before we have kids, which is now, he has this habit. Now, if we have kids and our kids pick that up f from him. Why is that to be just from me? I don't leave what the toilet seat up. What if it's up. all daughters? Oh, well, God, then, God, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. I said it. So, it doesn't matter. That would be like multiples of you telling me to put the seat. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, maybe that will right. encourage you to put the toilet seat down. You did something right now uh, besides, you know, fuck the toilet seat talk. But anyways, real quick, if you guys know how to fix this problem, let me know. <laughs> DM me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, notice how you brought it up. And this makes a world of a difference in the relationship because that stems from emotion, which was my next thing, right? It's not what you say. It's how you say it, which is something I struggle with a lot still. You know, I work on that. But in our relationship – a real positive character trait that you have when it comes to dealing with me, the type of person that I am, is that you know how to say things to me. Now, if you were to call me in the middle of the day and, and start nagging or saying something like about toilet seat, it would not be a good outcome. Mm -hmm. But you know a way to call me, would you know, say things you say and, you know, do you crack, love some, me? crack some jokes <laughs> and it was, I was just like, you know, I I just I just love it. It's it's kind of cute, babe. It's like, 
I can't really get mad at her. And the reason you bring it up, like, if our children, like, I really start to think, like, fuck, she has a point. Yeah, like, I have to be the example. I am the leader. I am the man of myself, of my family. So I have to be the example. So I can't even argue with a goddamn point. <laughs> and then also how, how you say it. Because you, know? you can tell me, like, leave, you left the fucking toilet set up again. Well, this is bullshit, you know. I'm tired of you. you or when you bring it up like like that, it makes me want to reevaluate things, which is important in a relationship. That validates gotta, the saying of it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So for the ladies out there who like to call their men during the day while he's taking a shit at work, uh, don't call him to nag about why his underwear on the floor, why he didn't take the trash can out, why didn't he put the toilet seat down. Let's be honest. Yes, it's a simple gesture that we can do. However, it's just what you say to him. Make it a joking, jokingly thing you call and say. But don't ever nag to the point where it gets over the top. Because let's be honest, if that was done to a woman, especially a Latino woman, she will turn around and tell you, don't tell me what to do. You've done it before? Yes, I have done it but before to you. But daddy always right though. <laughs> I love how you just told him that I leave the toilet seat up, leave my underwear on the floor, and not close I the trash can. I never said you're, you Snitch. leave the under. No, I Snitch. didn't. Yeah, you did. Did I I'm say gonna Alex? I'm going to this tape and we're going to watch. <laughs> she did say, she like just mentioned it from a third party. If your man does this, then, but she went down the list of shit that I do. Like, you know that's what? He feels Snitch. guilty. That's Snitch. why. No <laughs> shit, dude. <laughs> Yeah, you in just this family, put your man. foot you in know it. What? You know what? You just put your how, foot how in it. How else would you get those examples? You can't, you can't tr- see that, and that's why men don't want to do shit. They don't want to open up. I was vulnerable right there. That was, <laughs> that was vulnerable. <laughs> now they all know. It's fucked uh, up. Okay, so back to my question. Which one? Vulnerability. Yeah. Now, it goes the same for women. The thing for women is if you weren't empathetic when I came to you crying, which some days in the beginning you did, I felt lost because I realized if I can't go to you being my partner, then that means I have to go to some other resource. Now, let's be honest, if I have to go to another resource, that's going to cause problems, many problems. One, because I'm going outside of the home to discuss the issue that's inside the home. Because if I can't tell you that I need to be emotional because whether it's the time of the month or, um, I don't know, something that my family did or something that happened at work, why it that means we're not having a, a healthy communication yeah that means that we're not building our bond because if i have to be vulnerable you should be the first person that i'm vulnerable with because if i want you to protect and provide for me then you need to know how i need to be protected how i need to be provided so you may not be there emotionally just yet but you're, you have to learn. And if I run to somebody else, how are you ever going to learn how to respond to my emotions and to my vulnerability? No. Like riding a bike. You have to have the training wheels first or you'll fall. You'll have to get back up. So any type of now that I'm in my mid 30s, I'm totally facing stuff. I mean, look at this accident that we just had or the that i just had (laughs) the only part that i have in this accident (laughs) is handling it so we have to face our fears and a lot of people are scared to face them (laughs) just It's one of those moments where I'll remind you later why I'm laughing right now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but we'll talk about that. So. Um, well, you're right. You're right. Talking about emotional maturity here specifically. So emotional maturity is very important. Mm-hmm. And I think it goes hand with it's a It's part of, you know, emotions in a relationship. Is that when you have problems, like you said, 
don't run to other people. That's the that's the that's worst. The last thing you want to do. The last and the worst thing you you, you can do. run to other people. At least give yourself and your partner. I would say, good solid. Three communication tries. Like if by the end of if you you argue, shit happen. In general, like not like somebody kills somebody, right? Talk one time. If it's so bad that you can't figure it out, okay, pause. Take some time off. Talk one more time. If that doesn't work, it, and just for the sake of God, because I'm pretty sure most problems will be solved the first time. Oh, yeah. The le- Most of the leftover ones the second time. And just to be safe, you, you did it all. You give it a good shot. Do it one more time. If that doesn't work, yeah, go go talk to other people. But if you have to talk to a third, the third time, and your shit's still not solved, then that means that you need to see a therapist. Yeah, which is nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I I am a big proponent of that, and I think it, it it's a good thing. I think couples couples should see um, help outside help if if it's needed to be. Mm-hmm. Not, nothing wrong with that. Or you can schedule an appointment with me while you do your nails, and I can. Uh, give you some <laughs> nail <Yeah>. therapy <laughs> yeah no but i on um, i honestly therapy. think that we should have a good girl or, or girls in your circle that can be the devil's af- advocate for the relationship yeah in other words they would you want to pick the person you're talking to Outside of your relationship, when your relationship goes sour and you need to talk to somebody, get advice, make sure that person is on the side of the other party. That's important because if you're talking to a person who's on your side, they're going to say everything to reinforce your point of view. But what if they don't know you? You might be wrong. What if they don't know who? What if they don't know the opposite? Like, say, I went to somebody, a girl, and she doesn't know you. Well, in that case, I hope to God that person has common sense and and. Well, see, that's the thing nowadays. Mature. A lot of girls will side with their girl. Oh yeah. A lot of the times. Men do that too. Yeah. Side with the, so side with the boys. so that's that's a new skill that a lot of people need to pick up. A lot. It's a it's a habit. That that I think we all should pick up. But when we come, when we start learning the traits of having empathy towards other people. You don't have to know them. You just have to have empathy. Yeah. Didn't so, we talk about that yesterday about or today about being empathetic towards other people? We had some kind of conversation Yes, this about morning. That. This morning? Yeah, when you told me about your uh, call, your order or something where you're just getting upset and frustrated and I told you you just have to have an empathetic mindset sometimes mm, that's right that's right that's right okay yeah i realize that sometimes that's what just people they want you, you you want somebody's somebody's love you want somebody's warmth you want somebody's ear somebody's shoulder to lean on and that's that's human nature people go far sometimes for to get some love from another person especially women you have yeah. no idea how many friends i have that have complained vented cried been emotional that they had to leave their partner because their partner wasn't emotionally mature when they come to you whether it's they didn't know how to communicate or they didn't know how to open up they didn't know how to talk out their feelings or they would just brush off they didn't want to have the conversation with their partner and it's sad because men think that it's normal to not have emotions towards their, their towards their significant other. It also has a lot to do with the fact that couples spend a lot of time instead of talking, they they waste time doing things like binge watching TV series. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And spend time on social media. One of the things that we do a few things that we do that I think benefits our relationship is that number one, when we have a dinner, we're not on the phone. We're talking to each other, spending time with each other. Number two, even outside of dinner, we don't spend time watching TV. We don't have a TV. Mm -hmm. 
we don't have a TV. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you are like, what? Like that fucking girl from a certain place that was giving us tour of this yes, beautiful yes. facility. Yes. You don't have a TV? But you have to understand that a lot of people are okay. That's time wasted. That's fine. Some people, it's okay that they want to do that. You're going to have your leaders and you're going to have your followers and you're just going to have your stagnant people that are okay with living that day-to-day -day life. There are people who don't even have a book. They're not into business, but they just rather read yeah. or listen to audiobooks. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. There are some people who watch TV that make it a big deal that other people don't have a TV. I've had that. I've gotten like, wait, you don't have a TV? Like, no, I haven't had TV in my room ever as a kid. I never wanted a TV yeah. in my room. Same. I just had a radio. Well, the point, though, well, the point here is, is couples waste time on things that don't help the relationship. And I think you'll be more productive if people talk to each other, ask each other questions, or just generally spend time with each other and just doing silly shit. Well, let's take it back to that when we were moving, when we first moved into our place, and then we went to that breakfast joint. And you said that there's a couple, they're on a date. And the guy oh, yeah, walked the, the to girl. go get his food, and the girl was on his on her phone. She was on her phone when he was at the table too. Mm-hmm. And then talk you, about that? You, yeah. Yeah. So we're 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 having breakfast, and this guy I could tell this guy walks in. You know, he's got this girl there. They're on a date. And as I'm eating my breakfast, I'm looking to the side, and I see that this girl is on her phone. The guy was not on the phone. The girl was on the phone, and he would say something to her or ask her a question, and she'd be on the phone. She would answer, but she'd be on the phone. She's so. <laughs> so that really pissed me off to the point where I was about to get up on the way out and tell the dude. Do not tolerate that. Like, that happened to me one time. One time, I was on a date with this girl, and she pulled out her phone. She was on her phone. So I was I was just like, all right, do you want anything else before I get a check? And she's like, what do you mean, get a check? And I told her, you know, I wasn't a dick about it. I kept it a little sarcastic. Like, well, you seem like you're not interested, so if you want anything else, and I'll close it out, and we're done. And she's like, oh, no, I'm sorry. I was just blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't know what the hell she said. And she put the phone away and, you know, chill the rest after that. But I I never tolerate that. I will not tolerate that. It's on the first date, like, come on, have some respect. It will do it. But then what happened is the guy go, stands up, gets the food, comes back, sits down. Well, the food doesn't come yet. And because she was on the phone, he pulled his phone on. They're both on the phone. Well, and then you, they start talking while on the phone. But you don't even know. That was your perspective. It was my perspective. It was. Right. It was. So it's just, it's unfortunate that that's the normal thing for people to do. Correct. I'm not, again, I'm not, I'm, that's what right, I said. Right, and right. then he started doing the same shit. So one person at least has to be conscious and aware of that. If I took you out on a date, like, guys, if you take a girl out on a date, that time is for you to learn about who that person is. And if that person is constantly staring at, at the screen and screen sucking, then you're not going to know who that person is. How, do, how are you going to benefit from this date? Yeah. You're going to talk to a robot? And what's the point of a date then? And ladies need to grow some, I hate to say Go it, grow this. a pair, <laughs> some big girl panties, and ask questions. If you're on your phone and he's doing something or he's on his phone, Make it a point to ask questions. Why should you not be able to ask him questions? Put him on the spot. Ask him what he likes or what his intentions are. Put him in the hot seat so that he will like, oh, shit. Like, she's she's for real. She ain't lying. Because there, let's that, be honest. If, there are girls that will just scroll. Yeah. And they think it's okay. Like, oh, it's fine. Like, well. Really? What, what, how is it fine? You go on a date and you're on your phone scrolling? How is that fine? That uh, to me, that just makes it seem like you're not interested. Yeah. At all. But the problem is that this this new generation, they, they grew up with, with phones. So to them, it's natural part of life. It's like part of them. And they have a hard time putting it away. And so they're just so embedded with these cell phones since birth that when they go and socialize with other people, they socialize with people while on their phones. 
So I've seen three, four, five people together on a table on on their phones at some point or another. It happened to me too. Like I would always make this awkward joke. I'm like, well, great conversation we're having, guys. Yeah. And that usually wakes people up every time. I know. Sometimes I have to do that to you. <laughs> Never. No, I've done that to you. Um, okay, so dates and vulnerability. Mm-hmm. First date, do you encourage being vulnerable or do you wait a month that you're dating somebody or talking to somebody and then you start getting vulnerable like what kind of tips can you suggest or recommend to a young guy who's single who's looking to date how does he look out for the signs of when to be vulnerable when to be vulnerable to a girl so that she can be vulnerable to him or open good question i wouldn't say the first date no, okay. not not the first date because first of all, on the first date you only get a so little information. The first date is there for you to learn as much as you can about the other person. Assuming you're interested in that person, if 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 it's just a booty call, let's face it, I don't give a shit. She can blab her mouth and. Then how do you know it's a booty call? A, a guy can tell. Can like, a girl? Man, probably <laughs> probably women can tell too. Do guys put out signs that it's just a booty call? Is it that after 12 o'clock, if you get a call that's after 12 o'clock, yeah. that's how you know yeah. it's a booty if call? You, if, listen, ladies, if you get a call after 12 a.m., after midnight, asking what you're doing, we're definitely not calling you to cuddle or to talk about my problems at work. Maybe like 0.001%. So, yes, that's called a booty call. Shit, actually, that happens at any given time of the day. <laughs> 2 p.m., 6 p.m., after 12, yeah, if you need to, can't pick up on that, you can't, sorry, you need to pick up on that kind of shit. Um, but back to the first date, yeah, first date is definitely not the time to be vulnerable. Not the time to be vulnerable. And same, because t- you want to come off as a, you know, confident man to uh, to that woman and you take her out on a date. As intelligent, calm, you know, collected, mature. You know, not to act tough and be gangster and stuff. Just, you know, be a good man. Be a be gentleman. You know, be chivalrous. Over time, I'm assuming that first day works out. Then, you, you know, you go out, right? Because it's, it's a go, going out and then dating, right? Those are the phases. I would say when you're in a serious dating phase, you can start poking holes and, and, and give it shots but don't dive into like deep deep things because sometimes people can't can't accept it you gotta ask the other person and listen to the other person to figure out if that person is mature enough to handle something that you want to share with with them if that person is immature based on your evaluation then you probably shouldn't be sharing stuff with them if that person is somebody who goes talks and have 1500 girlfriends yeah you shouldn't share that if that person is judgmental <coughs> Yes, you shouldn't share that. So those are the signs you guys should look for when you're dating a woman. If she's jealous, if she's extremely jealous, especially, she's got no boundaries, no, don't be vulnerable with her. Once you figure out that the woman is mature, she's emotionally stable, preferably doesn't have 1,500 girlfriends, preferably is to herself, not the type to immediately run and talk to her girlfriends, can handle judgment and truth, even though even if it hurts, and ideally shares her vulnerable things with you. If she has all those factors, then yeah, I would start sharing things that are meaningful and very vulnerable and, <clears throat> and emotional to me, based on my prior experiences. So what are signs for a woman that a man is trying to become vulnerable with her? For me, personally, if I was to open up to <clears throat> about something that's really vulnerable to me, I would have a hard time doing it immediately. I can just like, you know, sit down and got to talk or we're talking about random stuff and, oh, yeah, you know, this happened. It would have to be something that a couple of times, if, which happened before, I would, I would, I would want to say it, but I would stop. 
because it just would could because it would bring out emotions in me and it's only natural to cry when you share something that's vulnerable so i would not want to come off as as a person who's crying and that's why i have a hard time i'm better now as you know so it's not something i can sit down and just start talking about like something i can schedule put on books it has things have come out of, of me before in uh, just of a moment one time when i was drunk a couple of times when i was drunk one time with a, a, a best friend of mine at the time one time with one of my exes yeah that's one of the signs so if you see your man kind of you could tell he wants to talk about something but you can also tell that he's not comfortable opening up about it or he would show signs like he would want to say something and just like no never mind because we don't understand sometimes how traumatic that can be until we start talking about it and i learned that during my sessions with the, uh, a therapist going i was like i can talk about this i can't like I, I got this right and you get there you start talking about it, you're like oh shit now like these emotions are pouring out of you the tears will start coming off and i would just cry and cry and i'll be like god damn like i hate this shit why am i crying like my brain is really quick to process it but my body and my emotion and, and my heart is still like just it's coming out of you slowly it's not like you can say something and boom it's all out oh great no it's it's a painful hole that you kind of have to over time let open and there's more to it and that's another factor there's more to it because once you start opening it up and talking about things more and more shit starts spilling out and you're like oh shit like where do i stop like wow this is because of that or this is why i am the way i am because of this happened to me when i was a child that's another fucking crazy factor yeah you can't control it you don't know and that's what makes a good therapist they're able to pull that out of you and if you're comfortable with them or <clears throat> with your partner then yeah but it, it can be a deep dark black hole well you why do you have to be a man to feel everything you just described that can be towards women too what do you mean like so to your woman? like yeah it's not just a masculine trait that expressing your emotions right uh. that can be I know that's, that was challenging for me because I was raised by a very masculine mo mother. Yeah. Now, hearing you describe all of that is how sometimes I feel. About me. About expressing myself. Oh. So, but I have to check myself and realize that if I don't express myself to you, how will you ever get to know who i really am i'm already True. gonna marry you so you know? if i want our bond to sh to to be stronger if yeah. i want us to really understand and have more respect for each other then i have to get uncomfortable with you with things and being vulnerable well. now if i want to nurture you I have to know how I need to nurture you so that I can make your life less stressful or to at least suggest or recommend things from a nurture perspective. Because you had that from your mom, right? We talked about that. So yes. your woman should be a place that can and should nurture you but not in a motherly mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. but in as in a woman feminine way, yeah. like Mother Earth. Mother Earth yeah. is good to us, right? Yeah. So if a man is dating a woman and he's still unable to be vulnerable with her, that makes it very uncomfortable for the woman because she's not able to uphold her femininity and the place that he needs her to be. So when men don't express themselves, they're hindering a woman from growing closer to her man. If they're not vulnerable with their women? Yes. 
Like, see, seeing that from, from that perspective, when you're vulnerable with me, I take it as I'm learning you. I'm learning how to nurture you, mm-hmm. how you should be nurtured yeah. so that you can ease that frustration, that pain, that, you know, emotion that you're going through so that that levels you up into a progressive or a, 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 a um, higher level of being that you are. That makes sense. Because yeah, no. sometimes those yeah. emotions that we carry in ourselves are hindering us from growth. So as a man with a woman who is supposed to be their partner, I think it's very healthy that men understand that they it's very, very important for them to be vulnerable with their women. And women need to understand that it is their right and their purpose to be nurturing to their man and not calling them a weak ass not throwing it back in their face like women let's be honest if you're able to be that feminine nurturer do you know how much more your man will love you when you're in that state of being when you're able to have this home where he can come to you and and like let out his frustration not saying he's gonna cry all the time but there are days when you will find your man feeling so flustered and angry and and you come he comes home to you and he's just like oh i just want to let this out and then when he lets it out He's just like a whole new improved 2.0 husband. And then he goes out and he conquers other things that he has faced for him. Yeah, that, that's me today. It's funny you talk about that. You're, you're very right. Just earlier today when, when me and Kevin, my partner, we went you know, to meet with certain clients and we, were, we got a contract at a U.S. bank in downtown L.A., that was a nice building. That building is fantastic. Probably the best, f- sickest building I've been to right. ever. And it's just, just awesome. And we get to, you know, work in there, take it down. And <coughs> it was just, a, it was amazing. I absolutely loved it. And then we made some connections there and then went on and, you know, made some more connections, met some good people. We're very productive. And on the way back, we're driving his wife, Myla calls him and she's she puts she puts her on speaker and i'm listening how she's talking to him she's like she she was specifically saying these things things like very good babe good job babe i'm proud of you stuff like that and in return he was like sharing stuff with her yes i i believe in myself we're gonna do this this is fantastic we're gonna go and gonna do more business and i heard all that and i love that because that's something we do you do that to me and i do that to you so we try to inspire each other and when i have a hard time i come to you and you know you you there to pick me up nurture me and you also tell me things i'm proud of you i'm grateful for you You're doing a good job look at how far you've gone you compliment me you inspire me you tell me you appreciate me that shit goes a long fucking way and that's what a lot of these girls don't understand like that goes a long fucking way. I'm just going to fucking say that. And I'll leave it at that. Women forget that it is a queen on the chessboard that can make or break a game in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And a lot of women don't know how to play chess in their relationship. They, they play fucking checkers. It's chess everywhere. It's chess in business. It's chess in your personal life. Right. It's chess in relation, relationships. But because we're, we're, ta- we're on the topic yeah. of relationships, women don't understand that they are too much in their masculine. And I say that from experience. That when they're too much in their masculine and they're like, oh, I don't want my man to cry. He needs to be strong. It's like strong is going to be too much. Be careful what you ask for because when a man is so much in his masculine, he's going to start measuring, you know, swords with you. And then yeah. what? Well, th- here's here's the big difference that women, I think, confuse sometimes when it comes to being a queen on a chessboard. 
a lot of women believe that being a queen in a chessboard is like i'm independent oh, no. you know i got it i take care of myself i almost you know i don't they say i don't need a man yeah. and they think that the queen on the chessboard and the queen has a very very powerful position on a chessboard like you said it can it can change the game make right. win it or lose it or say and save the king but when they go into too much of that masculine and they forget who they are and what their roles and responsibility is when it comes to her queen, her king, the whole game is done. Mm -hmm. What women need to learn is that her main responsibility as the queen to her king is to have his back. To protect. Support him. Mm -hmm. Believe in him. Sometimes do certain ballsy moves when the moment calls and when your end goal is to protect them, yeah, you're necessary. But your job is to have his back and support him and empower him and value him and appreciate him and show your love to him where he can get back out on the board and fucking slaughter everybody. That's the role of a queen. Not no bullshit that, I don't need a man, I'm a queen. and stupid. Your job is to make sure your man feels your love and, and, and support and appreciation and peace of fucking mind. Then he'll win any game. He'll go on, he'll step on any chessboard and he'll fucking crush it. And aside from the outside, how much nurturing he is to her. Yeah. And in return, in, in, and, has to, yeah, it, a king has to do what a king has to do to, for his family and for his queen. Right. Yeah. But some of these girls misconstrued the idea that if a woman's his a woman is a man's backbone mm -hmm. that the man is going to disregard a woman's feelings. Sometimes some women can think, well, why am I going to do all of this for him? What is he doing for me? Well, when you're too in your ego about what's in it for me, then you're in the wrong relationship because it should never be what's in it for me. It should be I'm helping him. I'm providing for him because you genuinely want to and when you genuinely do things for others it comes back tenfold but you don't ask for it you don't give some a homeless man a hundred dollars expecting him to give you change it doesn't work that way yeah. you know yeah. so a man when you when you nurture a man a man would provide and protect and lavish you with good things and that's one thing that I'm um, stepping more into and I'm learning more of the, you know, I have my business and, I, and I've always been the fight or flight. I've always been like, I got to do this, I got to do this. And now I've come to the conclusion that I don't have to do so much. I don't, what am I fighting for? I already have the the partner that i ideally want i know that i just have to learn my new role in life that i no longer have to be that like hustle bustle kind of woman it's great it's nice but the fact that i can love you take care of the house i'm still learning but it's still uncomfortable because it's i'm still learning how to do that but it's nice to know that I have that role and that ability to do so. You're learning, baby. Took some time. I'm proud of you. Yeah. Took about two years. <laughs> it's, it's never going to be easy. Well, with us, and I think it goes for all relationships, you have to be, first of all, clear of what you want. And I, we had conversations where I told you what I what I want out of this relationship, out of you in this relationship. Um, we have to make the certain things clear. And you also have to be clear about what your responsibilities are. I can't demand something of you if I'm not putting pouring into you. Right. That's just a one-sided relationship. Because a lot of guys, I'm going to admit it, a lot of guys want that in a woman. The cooking, the cleaning, the caring, the nurturing. But not a lot of guys are able to be what that type of woman expects them to be. Oh, 100%. Because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And everybody has a role and responsibility. And 
just like for example certain things i delegate to you because i understand that i can do them but it's not worth my time anymore now certain things i do f for us and for the house or for for you because i want to do it because i know it matters to you but if it's like for me or for the house sometimes it's not worth for me to dedicate my time to that i can just pay somebody to do it doesn't mean i don't love you or us or our house it's just my time has become more valuable so i look at those things this way you know i could saying? go phil phil philosophical, philosophical about right this. now but yeah. i don't want to digress all right so back, back to back to, <laughs> back to emotions in a, in a relationship go ahead no no go ahead what do you think women can do in a relationship in order for men to be able to be, be more vulnerable with them. Does that make sense? Because I can ask you a question this way. What do you think women can do for men to make you feel more vulnerable, uh, to make you feel comfortable? But what do you think, is, is there anything a guy can do what can I do for you in order for you to be able to accept my vulnerability? Do you, do you have to see that I'm a masculine man? And do you have to test me certain ways to see if I can handle emotions? And then you'd be like, right, I'm going to accept his vulnerability and his weakness during those moments without having my masculine kicking in. I'm just going to be a nurturing person to him. Does that make sense? I have to... I have to taking consideration my role as a woman and know that talking to you and asking you certain questions um, having you listen men just listen sometimes, sometimes. without being on the phone or the computer, or distraction. Seem interested. Ask questions when we're being vulnerable. Assume. Don't assume. <laughs> Don't be in your head about what next move you got to make for work. Because it's tough. some women can tell when you're listening and when you're listening. How do I listen, baby? What can I do? And this is a genuine question. Because I want to learn... I'm learning every day from you, and I'm sure dudes out there want to learn. What can I do to be a better listener? Even at this stage of our relationship, what more can I do? Or what do you want to see me do? Or what can I do to help you feel like you're being listened to? Because I, I think I know what I do, right? I try to, we, we talked about those things. One of the things you mentioned is that you get distracted, you get on your phone, I feel like you pay attention to me. Or... You're looking at me, but you, you're looking like through me, right? Or something behind me. Okay, I'm working on those things. So tell me, what, what can I do? Or how do you know where I'm not paying attention to you? Hit me with all that. Come on. You're asking me too many questions in well, one. We're sitting. trying to give them value. Well, I, I, th I think that you just need to seem interested. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> be intentional. Be intentional with when I'm talking to you. Sometimes, I don't know, throw a question at me and ask me, okay, about what I'm feeling. Because sometimes when I'm pouring my heart out to you, <laughs> you don't say anything. And I was like, oh, good talk. Well, let's be honest. When you really pour your heart out to me, I listen. Oh, you do. But when, but when you just want to talk, baby, and I know, I know for a fact what I'm doing at the moment is more important. I might be like, all right, baby, we'll 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 come back to that. But it's not like, for example, last time when you got into an, an accident, car accident. I, you know, I, I, 
call my wife. I wouldn't listen. I would call you back and I would call you back and I would talk and make sure you're good. You know, that that matters. Right. And I like, appreciate that. Like, I was at the store today and this guy, he's wearing this guy dressed like a girl. And I was, I was like, all right, babe, cool. <laughs> right now, I'm working on an important contract, but we'll revisit that subject. Love you. And <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that when you, when I say something to you, or I bring something up where I'm being vulnerable, you sometimes ask me questions about it to get to to understand it or to seem interested, like you are paying attention. That's what I like to hear, knowing that it may not mean anything to you, but maybe just ask one question or asking what what do you need from me, or you can come out with. Do you want me to listen? Do you or do you want to hear my my opinion? You want a solution, <laughs> or you want a pair of ears? <laughs> One or both. You know, simple things like that. It doesn't yeah. have to be all the time where you have to chime in and and sometimes yeah, there are days where I'm going to just want to say what I have to say. So that's every day, baby. I love you, but that's every day with you. And no. Yes. Well, doesn't don't make it seem like it's a bad thing. I'm not. I'm just saying. You, know, you love talking, baby. Yeah, I do. I don't yeah. have any friends. <laughs> okay? My friends are too busy doing other things with their lives. She's not lying. <laughs> You're a fucking loser. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, now we're even. See? I told them. You're talking about my laundry, my restroom <laughs> habits. There we go. She's a loser, guys. <laughs> Take it, bitch. You just snorted. God damn it. Ah, jokes on you, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, this shit's funny, man. Um, well, this is this. See, this shit is our everyday occurrence, <laughs> too. Yeah, this this type of shit, this this smack talk, and the only difference is that there's yeah. a mic in front of me. Yeah. So if you do say something, I just toss that shit right back at you and knock you over the head with it. And sometimes you get <laughs> sometimes. But now when I make that chest move, I was like, you know, I'm going to set you up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, really? Should wow. We, should we tell? No. We're not no. Tell <laughs> I can't believe you would say that. <laughs> Anyways, um, so... Don't let's, cry, babe. Uh, don't let's cry. wrap I'm it still, up because it's yeah, eight twenty, and um, no, she's saying hungry. it because she's hungry for sure, for sure. You see, you see, I'm fucking telling you, <laughs> bitch. I know you. I know you. Can, the only thing, the only no thing, thing. <laughs> the only Stop reason my friend, why you would thing. cut your conversation short because you love talking is if when you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise. If you feed her, <laughs> she won't stop. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways. For my sake, yeah, we, we'll be wrapping up shortly. But. So, let me see. What can women do? I think women can also. See, it it, it you really want to answer has it for you. It really it's a hard question. It's a, I ask you a hard question <coughs> for a reason, because it's easy for me to say what can women do in order. F what, I can tell you okay, what women what can, can do. Women do? It's just I wanted to pick your brain and see what you think, what your perspective is on what you think is the right thing to do to make it. I think comfortable. I think I think I already do it though. So I think yeah, it's just yeah. like asking questions or or asking you like, hey, like I I know that you seem like there's something wrong you know let's talk you say oh i don't want to talk about it and then i tell you okay well when you're ready to talk about it just let me know i won't say anything Bingo. that's one of those things i'll listen that's where i was going you know i i mean if you want to write it down text me voice it having an uh an open platform and putting the ball in their court mm -hmm. and then that's it not nagging, not picking, like, what's wrong with you? How come you don't talk to me? And this and this and that. It's like, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many times I tell you, I can turn blue. It's when you are mm -hmm. ready to talk to me about it. Now, if you don't want to talk to me about it, I'm not going to put so much stress on it because then I'm going to stress myself out. And then it's going to become an argument. And I don't need to argue with you for something that you're not ready to talk about. Mm -hmm. 
so one of those things is for sure which is what you just said is telling the person i understand that you're dealing with something right now you're going through stuff and i, I would like to know because i would like to help but if you don't feel comfortable that's okay we can revisit the subject on your terms so that's a good one because in for example with me when you've done that to me i, I realized that okay yes it's something that i might i'm having a hard time sharing at the moment but she's telling me that it's safe for me and that whenever i'm ready we can revisit the subject and she's willing to listen without being ju judgmental another thing that women can do like i said is ask questions but not in a judgmental matter one of the things that i learned recently and i'm trying to implement more and more is try to avoid the why question why is a sounds judgmental use the what version instead of saying why so upset say what is the reason that you're upset or why did you do this what is the reason what do you think about stuff like that and i i realized that it sounds less aggressive, less judgmental. That would help. Another thing that would help is for a woman to definitely share her things, her vulnerable things with the men. Because especially when it comes to family trauma, because everyone has family baggage, every single person. We don't get to choose our families we all carry that, that that baggage family and relationships we all do so everybody has some kind of childhood you know issues and experiences sharing that helps because like i mentioned earlier unlike women men a lot of times we just bottle it up we bottle it up because since birth a lot of times men are told well men don't cry men don't cry tough it out be a man man up but they don't tell men that manning up or being a man doesn't necessarily mean you don't ever allow yourself to be vulnerable or you don't allow yourself to cry. You can cry. The emotions are natural. It's just you need to understand that once you open up, you cried, you felt the emotions, you went through them, you need to learn from that and improve. And not stay in that same place in victim victim mentality. That's what separates winners from losers, and that separates m strong men from weak men. A weak man would constantly cry and be vulnerable about the shit, and blah 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 blah. A strong man can do it once, you know, like talk about it, allow himself to be vulnerable, maybe twice, and then like, all right, cool. This happened to me. I'm learning from it, and I'm moving forward. As a matter of fact, an even stronger, wiser man would be like, not only have I learned from it, I'm going to weaponize it now. Like I'm going to use that shit as source of power to move forward, as a reason and a, for my momentum, as energy source for me to crush my enemies and prove people wrong. And everybody who's done me dirty or didn't believe in me or betrayed me or stabbed me in the back, that's, that's an ultimate level right there. For as long as I remember, I was the first version, which is still good. If you as a guy or as a person learn from your mistakes, and you get over them, learn from them, and you move forward, it's great. It's great. That's already good. But you become a different beast if you not only learn from it, but you use it to weaponize it to make yourself successful. Like somebody told you something or did something to you, you're like, oh, shit, okay, now it's game on. Like, it will take me, if it, even if it takes me 5, 10, 20 years, I'll prove you wrong. Yeah, it's okay to have a chip on your shoulder. So use that, extract that. And that's what I think separates me from a lot of people, and not just me, and the people in my surroundings as well. We're, we're good at the weaponizing the hate, the negative emotion, the disbelief in us, the... The, the negative talk. All right, cool. Oh, you said that? Fantastic. I'm going to take that footer right here and I'm going to fucking grind until until what you said no longer serves me and I got to that level. I'm just going to throw it off and I'm going to catch the next enemy and then I'll move forward, propel from that. But that's a whole other type of conversation. That's, you know, 
Patrick with David has a great book about that. Shout out to PBD. Fantastic book. Choose your enemies wisely. Great book. And I relate to that book because I've been like that my, my entire life. We'll, we'll talk about that separate. So, yes, going back to learning from other people other person and if you're vulnerable that that helps that would help me to be vulnerable with you because i understand that you're not perfect and i'm not perfect and if you might be embarrassed of certain things happen to you and your family i might be embarrassed but but by sharing that with each other we're like all right cool we both that's the reason why we're both fucked up this is because when you share things about yourself about your family and your past your childhood i see how you became the person that you are because of that and this happened to us. One time you had a self-realization. Why you dislike cleaning the house so much is because of, you know, what happened when you were a child. And to me, that helps to learn who you are. And it helps me with with my approach to you. And I'm sure same thing with me. I would share something that happened to me. You understand, oh, well, he might have certain traits because of he's gone through as, 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 a, as a child or as a young adult. Yeah, and that was very, very hard and uncomfortable to tell you that. Because I'm a woman, and that is what usually the role is. And I don't know why it was so challenging for me to just say, like, I don't don't clean the house. Like, I just, I wasn't, I cleaned the house, but not to the extent that you were used to yeah and i told you i will not lower my standards right i think it is very wise of you it was very wise of you to say i don't clean the house like i i knew especially in the beginning that you don't like it but i kept pressing the issue because first and foremost i'm a clean person there's nothing wrong with being a clean person not to say that you're dirty which is different levels. But had you said plain and simple, you know, I don't I don't clean, I would be like, Well then, that's a big, big red flag for me. I cannot live with a with a dirty person. What so if I just was smart like of you not to do it? Pay somebody to clean for both of us. That's fine. That's the ulti- we already do. We already do. <clears throat> but for some reason, with me, that not only is important for me because I'm a sort of a clean freak or, or I like being clean, but also I've seen that growing up. And I think, at least in my mind, it's a valuable trait that a woman needs to have and it increases her value as a woman. I'm going to tell you the way it is, like plain and simple. It increases, for at least in my eyes, it increases your 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 value. But it's 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 very simple. What do you expect in me as a man? Well, what do you expect in a man? A man of your dreams, a, a, a high value man. I'll tell you what. I, you know, I already know. But go ahead. Are you sure you don't want to answer for me? No, I'll tell you. S- simple things, right? Leader, man of his word, protector, provider, right? Who said that? Is it is it written somewhere? I don't know. I've never read it somewhere. But the same thing. If you ask a man, what does a man want in a in a high value woman, right? Nurturing, motherly, housewife traits, cleaning, cooking. Cooking is very important. That's what women were responsible for for thousands of years. Thousands of years. Men would go out and hunt and, and fight wars and you know build houses and we, we, we our job is to provide for a woman, to build the house around her. To, to put clothes on her and to get the food, right? To create shelter. Nothing has changed over time. That's what man's supposed to do. That's what we still do. That's why it pisses me the fuck off every time I see any of those short reels where women say we don't need men. That's so disrespectful. That's one phrase I think by far that is the most disrespectful. Like how dare they sit here in the comfort of today's society that men built Brick by brick, city by city, country by country, and say, we don't need men. We don't need men. Like, how dare you? That's so disrespectful. I think it was Holland or Netherlands or something where all women or 75% of women's population went on strike for one day 
And guess what happened? Nothing. The country kept running. Nothing stopped. The industry, the economy didn't stop. But I bet my life if tomorrow in any country, even the shittiest third world country in the world, men stop doing what they're supposed to do and go on a strike, fuck, it's over. Game over. Game over. Everything will stop. People will die. Infrastructure will collapse. Economy will collapse. Not to say that men better are better than women. It's just, it's just their responsibility, role. right? Just like if all women tomorrow lose ability to have to give birth, we're all fucked. I mean, yeah, men will survive until you know they die because we know how to. But then, but then nothing will be reproduced. It'll be one last generation, and unless we figure out how to do some in science cloning, yeah. Well, you get what you get. What I'm t- what I'm talking about, right? Woo. I was venting right there. Yeah, that that's was why I was just like, I ain't even going to say anything. You know how long I've been holding this in me? Since we stopped recording, baby. That that right there was venting. See? And you had a beautiful example of not interrupting. Thank you. Good job. Pen fell. You know yeah. what that means? It's, we've got to cut the shit short. Got to cut it up. Yeah. All right. Finish it up, baby. Give it to them. Cl- close out this episode. It's all you, baby. So we can go eat. <laughs> Women, be in your feminine so that your man can be vulnerable for you in order to provide and protect stronger. That probably didn't make any sense, but you really put me on the spot. No, it did. It did. It did. It did. In other words, really know your role as a woman. Yes. Really know your role as the queen, not the queen or the How passenger princess. Yeah, they butchered <laughs> that 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 title. No, know your role as a woman, as a high value, as a good woman. Like fuck all that high value. As a good woman, just know your role. Research it, learn about it, and talk to other other good women, respectable, not only fans hoes, not women with five million followers who, who show their asses. No, just good women. Good mothers, good wives. Yeah. 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 That's but very well. Yes. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We are back. I am excited. I am happy. <laughs> As you guys can tell, we we got shit to talk about. Mm-hmm. And we'll be back. But thank you for watching. And if you found any value in this episode, please click share. Click like. And subscribe to our channel that helps our growth and thank you for being a part of this journey i'll see you guys we'll see you guys um, next time <laughs>